Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Gosling. How to Fly asked me to give you a quick introduction on the text-to-text -text capability of generative AI. So if you're AI curious, AI unknowing, or just AI confused like I was, here's my introduction into the fascinating world of text-to-text -text generative AI. Can I have a blackboard, please, to help me explain the concept of text-to-text -text generative AI? Awesome, thanks. So, what are large language models, also known as LLMs? A large language model, or LLM, is a type of artificial intelligence model designed to understand and generate human language. It can execute tasks such as translating languages, composing text, answering questions, writing code, summarizing lengthy documents, generating creative content, providing simple explanations on difficult topics, and even engage in human-like conversation. Some well-known examples of LLMs include GPT-4 by OpenAI, Gemini by Google, Claude 3 Opus by Anthropic, Mistral by Mistral AI, Llama by Meta, Grok by X, and many more. Some of these models are open source like Mistral and Llama, meaning anyone can use, modify, and share them just like a recipe that's shared for everyone to cook. Others are commercial, which means they're more like a restaurant dish that you can only enjoy by visiting or paying for it. Open source allows for more collaboration and innovation, while commercial models often come with support and unique features for businesses. Now, how does an LLM actually work? Text-to-text -text generation by large language models like GPT-4 involves a sophisticated process that converts a given input text into a desired output text. Let's go over a simplified version of this text-to-text -text generation process starting from the user input all the way to the AI-generated output. So first, let's talk about the input prompt. Let's say I ask the following question to a large language model like ChatGPT. Please give me a short speech of a Premier League football coach that wants to motivate his team at halftime when they are 0-2 behind. The first thing the LLM will do is split the input prompt into smaller, more manageable pieces. These pieces is what we call tokens. These tokens could be words, parts of words, or even characters, depending on the model's design. But in most cases, a token equals a word. So in the future, whenever I talk about a token, think of it as a word. Here's how GPT-4 would tokenize our input prompt. Every colored piece of text is a token. So in this example, the model has split the text into 33 tokens. As you can see, a token often equals a word. But when the word is too long, it is often split into several tokens. The next step would be to turn each of these 33 tokens into an embedding, a numerical representation of the complex semantics of a token so that a computer can fully understand the token or word. So let's pick the token motivate as an example. This can, for example, be turned into the following initial embedding. The numbers in this embedding vector represent the complex semantic properties of a token. 0.95 might represent the likelihood that the token is a verb. 0.87 might represent emotional intensity of a word. Minus 0.45 could relate to the current performance level. And in this way, a huge amount of numbers in every embedding represent the detailed, complex semantics of a word. So where are the values of these initial embeddings coming from? The values of these initial embeddings are based on the parameters received from a pre-trained model. This model has been pre-trained on a huge amount of text coming from books, articles, conversations, movies, etc. By doing so, the model has learned the complexities of the human language. Important to be aware of is that if you use the same language model on the same token, the initial embedding will always be the same. So the initial embedding of motivate will always be the same if you always use, for example, GPT-4 with the same pre-trained model. Now we have arrived at a crucial step in the process, a step that really revolutionized how LLMs work. The transformation of the initial embeddings into context-aware embeddings through what is called a self-attention mechanism. Through this step, the model identifies the most important words and nuances in the input prompt needed to generate the most relevant output. So let's go back to our example. Although the word motivate might start with an initial embedding, which is always the same if you use the same LLM, the word motivate might have slightly different meanings and a different importance in a different context. By moving the input embeddings through different transformer layers and by applying what is called a self-attention mechanism, the different embeddings get further fine-tuned to the context and the importance of each word in the input prompt gets calculated. This process transforms the initial embedding into a context-aware embedding. So once we have our context-aware embedding for each token in the input sentence, 
It's time to decode all context-aware embeddings into an output. Let's go back to our example. In the previous step, all input tokens have received a context-aware embedding. These embeddings are now placed in an embeddings matrix. Each row of the matrix is the context-aware embedding of one token. So the embedding of token one on row one, the embedding of token two on row two, et cetera. Then, based on this embeddings matrix, the probabilities of the next output token are calculated. And based on the probability distribution, the next output is chosen. If the temperature setting of the model is very low, the model will always pick the most likely token in the distribution as the next output token. As the temperature setting increases, it might sometimes go for less likely words. This can result in more creative and less repetitive answers. But if you set the temperature too high, this might just result in gibberish. It's also very important to highlight that every generation cycle only generates one token at a time based on the embeddings matrix of the input. So let's quickly go back to our example. Based on the embeddings matrix of our input prompt, the first output token might be listen. In the second cycle, the token listen moves to the input prompt. Based on the new input prompt, new embeddings are created for each input token. And based on the new embeddings matrix, a new next token is chosen. For example, the token up. This iterative process goes on and on until the full speech is written. So let's walk over the process once again. And let's do it a bit in a philosophical and poetic way by comparing the workings of an LLM with generating the story of your life. Let's start at birth. You started with a specific small input or context window, for example, where you are born, who your parents are, etc. If your life would be generated by an LLM, the next moment in your life will be guessed based on your history. Your life story will be written as a continuous iteration of new moments that are generated, and every moment generated will be added to your history. Older models would guess the next moment in your life based only on the most previous moments. The revolutionary part of the new LLMs like GPT is the transformer architecture with a self-attention mechanism. Due to this architecture, the next moment in your life is not only chosen based on your recent history, but also important moments in your life that could influence the next possible moment. So it looks back at your entire history and says, based on the current situation, these are the most relevant moments in your history needed to generate the next moment. So I hope this explanation helped to understand the high-level workings of an LLM. I hope this also clarifies what, for example, an acronym like GPT stands for, where the G stand for generative as it generates output. The P stands for pre-trained as it uses the parameters of a pre-trained model to tokenize, transform, and decode the input into an output. And the T stands for transformers as a revolutionary architecture in the LLM. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like. If you're interested to learn more about topics such as retrieval augmented generation, model fine tuning, prompt engineering, real world applications of generative AI, image generation, speech generation, autonomous agents, and many more topics related to generative AI, then click subscribe. Finally, if you have a question about this video or about generative AI in general, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks for watching and see you next time.